Those to be ordained deacons, Pat Derek Senior Abbe, St. Dominic Catholic Church, Taifa. Chomo, Saint Isito Catholic Church, Nima. Jos Jonas, Abaifa, Dong Puyer, Saint Thomas Aquinas Chaplaincy, Legon. David Osei Jumfo, St. Martin Catholic Church, Teshi Camp. Martin Bamelinam, Agdasis of Paraku, Benin. James Jata, Diocese of Banju, the Gambia. George Mendy, Diocese of Banju, the Gambia. Clement Quigreen, St. Stephen Catholic Church, Dakuman. Joseph Efa Sion, St. Dominic Taifa. Christian Yakote, Diocese of Natingo, Benin. Theophilos, in Tree and Virginia, Matters of Uganda, Mamprobi. Last but not the least, Bernard. As Samoa Quatin, Our Lady of Star of the Sea, Dan Suman Last Stop. Shall we rise? Presiding over this holy mass is Most Reverend John Bonaventure Kofi, Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, who is con celebrating priests, priests from other dioceses joining us. Our processional hymn is Catholic hymn number 251. 251.
we shall sing from him number 10. sing from 392 392 
Catholic faith for Please sit. May I invite Mr. Benjamin Nado, the PPC Chair, St. Dominic Parish, Taifa, for a welcome message. Shall we welcome him? Arise, Castle Faithful. Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, His Grace, John Bernard Kofi SSP, CSSP, Vicar General of the Archdiocese of Accra, Very Reverend Father, Dr. John Kwabna Lewis, Deans, Vice Deans present, Vocation Directors present, Nana Adu. Mediaku, the first chief of Taifa, all priests present, religious sisters present, ordinates, parents and family of the ordinates, Catholic faithful from far and near, group and society present, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. His Grace, it is with a delightful heart that I welcome you to St. Dominic Church, Taifa on behalf of the parish priest and his assistant, PPC, and the entire members of the church community in Taifa. It's a joy, nose go bound, and with very happiness we say to you all, Akwaba. His grace, we are very much grateful and highly indebted to you for making this occasion a dream come true. This is the first diaconate ordination ever hosted by this parish. Hence, we are grateful and we give all glory to God. I extend our sincere greetings to all the to be ordained deacons of Accra Diocese, as well as the many family members and friends who have come today to celebrate this happy occasion with us. In a special way, I wish to express the church gratitude to the parents and family members of soon-to-be deacons for the witness of your own faith, which has contributed in no small way to the joy of this day. May God reward all of you for the sacrifice you have made on behalf of your sons and for the encouragement and support which you will be given to them in their effort to be a faithful ministers of church, of the church, and preachers of the word of life. Once again, we welcome you all and pray that God will lead you home safely after the program. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you very much, PPC Chair, Mr. Benjamin Nado. We shall humbly invite the Metropolitan Archbishop to preside over this ordination mass. Shall we all stand? God is good all the time. and all the time. Please be seated. Arise, Kali Faithful. Arise, Kali Faithful. Dromoson. Look up for Jesus Christ. God is good all the time. Thank you.
thank you, God, for having loved us even to the end and for allowing us to ordain these men for service to the diaconate. If you hear a name of, of the ordinandi, I would like you to show yourself, to show, to show your appreciation for how God has done in, in this life for you by applauding. The names will be, will be out in pairs, and I will wish that you, you, show, you show yourselves to the assembly. This is the, the ordinary. The names will be out in pairs, and I, will, I, will show, uh, and I wish that you show yourself to the assembly. From the Gambia, James Jata and pa Mandy George. From Benin, Martin Bamelina and um, uh, the Christian Yekote. <laughs> From Ghana, Malik Raymond Log Ampa and David Osse. Judging for <laughs> and from Almighty Typha. <laughs> David Senor Derek Senor Abe and Joseph Efa Sion. Clement Quagrin and Jonas Abe Aifa Abe Aifa from St. Thomas and uh, St. St. Stephen Abe uh, Dakuman. <laughs> Theophilus in three and all from um, um, uh, Mat of Uganda, Maprobi, and Joseph Edem Edem Datsumo from uh, Kizito. <laughs> Bernard Quarton from Dansuma and Julius. Julius who? Julius Gamazi. Gamazi. The last but not the least, Master Azaglo from Weja. These young men are today entering the threshold of the priesthood as deacons for immediate preparation for the mysterious priesthood. God bless you. Our gratitude goes to their parents who have brought them thus far and to say your toils would never go unnoticed. The last but not the least, I wish to thank the parish priest Father Joseph Arthur and his associate Father Sarah for hosting this assembly. Please let's stand. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this mystery of God's love, our wealth our sinfulness, we turn to Him and beg him for pardon and strength.
I confess Almighty God and sisters that I have greatly sinned my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek, not be saved, but to serve your brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that those your servants whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacons may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Our first reading will be taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 3, verse 5 to 9. In those days, the Lord said to Moses, Bring the tribe of Levi near and set them before Aaron the priest, that they may minister to him. They shall perform duties for him and for the whole congregation before the tent of meeting, as the minister at the tabernacle. They shall have charge of all the furnishings of the tent of meeting and attend to the duties for the sons of Israel as the minister at the tabernacle. And you shall give the Levite to Aaron and his sons. They are wholly given to him from among the sons of Israel. The word of the Lord. We shall join the choir as they sing the responsorial psalm, psalm, Catholic hymn numbered 354, 384, 384.
Our second reading is taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. Acts 6, 1 to 7. Now, in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists murmured against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the body of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, Pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid hands upon them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. The word of the Lord. Shall we rise for the gospel acclamation? And make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always to the close of age.
gospel is taken from John chapter 13, verse 1 to 15. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judah, son of Simon Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it round his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, whoever has bath has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed his feet and put on and put his garment back on and will climb at table again he said to them do you realize what i have done for you you call me teacher and master and rightly so for indeed i am if i therefore the master and teacher have washed your feet you ought to wash one another's feet i have given you a model to follow so that as you have done for you, so that as I have done for you, you should do also for others. Beloved, the gospel of the Lord. Please keep standing. Please sit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, here begins the rites of ordination proper. The Archbishop will take his seat. Each of the candidates will be called by name and they will respond accordingly. God's call is a personal call and one must respond for himself. The Archbishop will then inquire from a priest involved with their formation and training if they have been found worthy to be ordained into the ministry of deacons. With the concern of all of us gathered, the Archbishop will elect them for ordination. 
May I now invite very Reverend Father Emmanuel Kwashi, Director of Vocations, for the calling and presentation of candidates. Let those who are to be ordained deacons please come forward. Theophilus Thomas in three and junior. Present. Gabriel Adam da Chomo. Present. Derek Senor Abbey. Present. Mazuel Kwame Azaglo. Present. Raymond Lord Ampong. Present. Jonas Abba Yifa Dompuri. Present. David Ose Jufo. Present. Martin Bamelinam. Present. Joseph Efa Isiao. Present. Christian Sotima Yakote. Present. Bernard Asamoa Jose Quanti. Present. Julius Della Kofi Gamaji. Ata present. Pa George Mende present. Clement Quagrin present. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church, ask you to ordain these men, our brothers, for service as deacons. God is good all the time. I remember when I, was, when I was being ordained, after this, there was a mighty song, a mighty singing by the choir. So the, the choir must give a song to testify that they have been moved, they, they have, uh, they have been found worthy. Give a song, a song.
for yourselves. Now, Father, do you find them to be worthy? After inquiring among the people of Christ, and upon recommendation of those concerned with their training, I testify that they have been found worthy. We rely on the help of the Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, and choose these men, our brothers, for the order of deacons. Thanks be to God. Now we are going to have the, uh, the homily. It will be delivered by, by the Vicar General. So you are all attention, please. God is good and all the time arise Catholic faithful Saint Dominic Saint Dominic Saint Dominic so your grace thank you for this opportunity to share the following thoughts first or the 90 we want to thank God for your lives. And we want to congratulate you for persevering and responding to God's call this far. My dear brothers and sisters gathered here at the Last Supper, as we heard from the Gospel reading taken from John 13, 1 to 15. By the way, these are not lotto numbers. When you get home, you read John 13, 1 to 15. Don't go and stick 13, single 1, 15. <laughs> At the Last Supper, Jesus did not only institute the sacrament of the Eucharist and the priesthood, but as we heard, he also washed the feet of his disciples and told them, as I have done, you should do to one another. So, we could say that inverted commas open and close jesus ordained the apostles for service to serve one another hence the theme of this holy uh, of this homily dear ordinandi especially is ordained to serve you have been ordained to serve all of us priests have been ordained to serve and there are five points I would like to share with you. The first is the kind of service we are ordained to render. That's the first one. The second one, service with love. The third one, service with humility. All this learning from Jesus Christ. And then going into the second reading from the Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, we can learn the, the following. Service is a team work. We will stress that later on. Then the last one, qualities of Dickens mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles 6. So these are the highlights of the day's news. Now the details. First, what kind of service have we been or are we ordained to render? There are various kinds of services. You can have financial service, banking service, health service, tram trans transport service, and so on. So what kind of service is one ordained to offer or to render? Primarily, 
the deacon or priest or bishop is ordained to offer pastoral service aimed at the salvation of souls so our area of operation service pastoral service for the salvation of souls pastoral service has various aspects permit me to mention just the two fundamental aspects the spiritual aspect and the temporal or social aspect and if you listen carefully to the uh, second reading from Acts chapter 6 the apostles declared that the activities that the spiritual activities of prayer and preaching God's word are more paramount to nearly yearly distributing food when I was growing up we had food distribution corporation that is the temporal service so the preeminence of the spiritual aspect notwithstanding the needs of the human body have to be taken care of hence the apostles mandated that seven men should be chosen and they laid hands on them to provide the copra works of mercy to the widows so hence ordinandi the ordinandi as pastoral service providers we cater for both the spiritual and corporal works of mercy for god's people now this leads us to the second point service with love you are called ordained to serve with smomo odo lolo serve with love and we, we can learn from jesus christ according to the the gospel reading again the very first verse john 31 it says jesus having loved those who were his own in the world loved them to the end john 13 1. he loved them to the end so dear Odinandi, like jesus serve god's people with love love them because christ loves them serve them because christ has saved them true love is selfless the love with which we should serve people is the selfless or unconditional love again we learn from jesus christ the selfless love of jesus christ is seen in the fact that he loved the apostles to the end even though jesus knew very well very well at the last supper whilst he was still loving them he says he loved them to the end he knew judas would betray him he knew peter would deny him not only once three times he knew the rest otilo they will run away he knew all this but he still loved them that is selfless unconditional love remember these were the very, very people he called friends the betrayer the one who denied and the rest who ran away he called them at the last supper john 15 13 my friends and not only called them friends he was ready to die for them and so he said greater love has no man than to lay down his life for his friends john 15 13 similarly we ordained ministers should love whether we are betrayed or not we should love whether we are denied or not we should love whether we are disliked or liked in other words our love for those whom we serve should be like that of jesus christ who came not to be served but to serve and that, that is not the end to give his life as a ransom for many mark, mark 10 25 so you can mark it down since it's from mark now love for service also until passion if you love football you have passion for football similarly dear Dunandi, serve with passion don't serve as if you have been compelled to do the work serve with passion 
lako ye nye minye kenchunye. Now this leads to service with humility. The second virtue which characterizes pastoral service is humility. In the gospel reading, Jesus demonstrated humility in various ways. I, I want to mention three of them first. From the position of being served at table, he got off the table to serve others. So he was master. He presided over the Eucharist, being served. They would provide things here and there. Remember, he told the apostles, two of the apostles, go here, find a room, and prepare the place. So others to serve. But at a point, he got off from being the master, the presiding officer, so to say, to serve others. Let us learn ordained ministers to serve. Secondly, Jesus took off the master's garment and wrapped himself with the servant's towel. He took off the master's garment and wrapped himself with the servant's towel. I see a symbolism in this. And what am I talking about? It was as if Jesus took off the garment of equality with God and wrapped himself with the towel of the lower dignity of humanity. And though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deal equality with God. You know that ordinandi that from philippians 2 6 to 11 so i will not go more in detail so like jesus to serve god's people with humility means putting aside the clerical status as priests deacons let us be also put take off the outer garment and serve let us humbly serve god's people with respect and politeness after all many of them were catholics for decades before we were born not to talk about before we started thinking of getting to the seminary so let us serve them with humility thirdly look at this the most sacred the most precious hands ever which had just handled the most holy body and blood of jesus christ will soon wash the dirty feet of who the callous man judas as well as the dirty feet of the timid 11 apostles one would deny ten would run away this is a demonstration of sublime humility combined with mercy because he saw he would betray me you deny me and yet washed the feet this should inspire all of us ordained to always serve with humility accompanied by mercy this leads me to the next point the fourth point service is a teamwork in the second reading beloved the apostles mandated not just one man to serve the widows he, they mandated seven men as deacons, indication of a team. A team. Beloved, so dear Odinandi, especially, despite your individual temperament, whether you are reserved, like I was reserved uh, in those days in Nima, whether you are reserved or the outgoing, whatever be your temperament. Because even those, when we are playing football, those in reserve seats sometimes are brought to play. Whether you are reserved or not, whatever be your gifts, great or small, whatever be your competencies, always keep in mind that the pastoral service is a teamwork. It's a teamwork. Each of us should see himself as a team player who works with other deacons, if you are deacon, priests and bishops, to facilitate the salvation of souls. In the ministry, especially in the one holy Roman Catholic Church, there is no lone ranger. But there is no Messiah except Jesus Christ. There is no savior except Jesus Christ. 
So please, ordinandi, come not with a, a messiah complex or a private agenda. Rather, come and work together with us so that we can have a strong team to advance the cause of Jesus Christ. The, fa the fifth point, qualities of deacons. What are the qualities of deacons needed to make them providers of pastoral service? There are many of them, but let us concentrate on the three mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6, verse 3. Good reputation, filled with the Holy Spirit. They were just going to distribute food, but one of the qualities they look for, filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the other one, filled with wisdom. Let me just go through a bit. Good reputation. Beloved, this is a picture I want to give you. Imagine driving in the night and your headlights are off, you know, and the place is dark, you know, what can happen. So, whereas a bad reputation is like driving in the night without headlights, a good reputation is like the headlights of a car going ahead and shining so that one can drive on. Good reputation is like that. When you have a good reputation before, before you get to where you have been assigned to, it clears the way for you to be there. So dear Odinandi, begin to build good reputation. Secondly, whereas a bad reputation is like an offensive smell, you know, no that which drives away people. As we are here, when you smell something, you know, it can scatter us around. Good reputation, on the other hand, is like a sweet-smelling perfume, which lingers on even after the user has passed by. When you have good reputation, when you have even transferred somewhere, yes, your name remains there, and people have found memories of you. Thirdly, a good reputation is like a scoop or a spoon of honey which attracts hundreds of ants. So, dear Odinandi, may the sweetness of your reputation attract many souls to Christ. And not only that, attract many souls who desire to become priests and religious. The other quality, filled with the Holy Spirit. The seven deacons, as we just heard, were described as filled with the Holy Spirit even before the apostles laid hands on them at 6 3. Dear Odinandi, therefore, whereas we are agents, priests, deacons, and so on, we are agents of pastoral service. We are those who do like the daily work, so to say. The Holy Spirit is the divine inspirer. He inspires us to do the right thing. The divine inspirer of our vocation. He's the divine animator of our pastoral services. He's the divine fuel for our pastoral activities. He's the divine supplier of the gifts and talents and so on. In short, without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing and we are nothing. Did you hear that? Especially Odinandi. So, Odinandi, we pray that the Holy Spirit, whom you receive at baptism, who strengthen you at confirmation, will fall afresh on you as the Archbishop lays his hands on you and prays for you. Filled with wisdom, the last bit of point, and then we conclude the day's news. Filled with, a, of wis with wisdom. The first begins are described as filled with wisdom again at 6 3. In this contest, biblical passage in the Acts of the Apostles, the meaning of wisdom is not given. But if you travel further to James 
James chapter 3, 17. So that is sure banker next weekend, 3, 17. James 3, 17. It gives you some understanding of the type of wisdom they look for in those to distribute the food. Remember, there was tension because the Hellenists said, we have been neglected, our widows have been. So there was tension. There was near division. So who do you select? select? It was somebody who brings people together. Somebody who has compassion for the needy and so on. So this is what St. James writes. It says, wisdom from above is pure, peaceable, gently, willing to yield, full of mercy. That is the compassion. Full of mercy and full of good fruits without any trace of partiality so they will share equally without any partiality or hypocrisy james 3 70 this was the kind of wisdom the first begins possess and which would enable them to bring satisfaction satisfaction to the aggrieved hellenist and unity in the community so beloved this is the kind of wisdom which we should seek if we don't already have it, the conclusion. Beloved, we are ordained to serve. The five key words, service, love, humility. The next one, the fourth one, has to do with team, teamwork. And the last one, qualities. Now the service. We are ordained for pastoral service, not for financial service, or any other kind of service. Love. We are ordained to love like Christ does. Humility. We are ordained to serve with humility like Christ. Team. We are ordained to serve as a team. Qualities. Good reputation. The indwelling of the spirit. The wisdom. And wisdom. These three are non-negotiable. We need them to do the work. Finally, therefore, when we persist in serving with these virtues and qualities, the Lord will count us among the good and faithful servants. Amen. Amen. We thank God for his word. The Archbishop will sit. The candidate stands before the Archbishop to manifest his intention of commitment to celibacy, celibate chastity. The candidate standing before the Archbishop is questioned about his readiness for ordination into the order of deacons. Then the candidate goes to the archbishop and kneeling before him, places his joint hands in between those of the archbishop, promising respect and obedience. All will stand and the Archbishop, without his matter, invites all gathered to prayer. Litany of the Saints. The candidates will prostrate themselves, indicating their humility and total surrender to the will of God. We shall all invoke the saints to support our brothers. Then the Archbishop would then pray for them. It will be followed by the laying on of hands. All of us will be standing. The candidate goes to the Archbishop and kneels before him. The Archbishop lays his hands 
on the candidates head in silence. Prayer of consecration. The candidate would then kneel before the archbishop with his hands extended over them he takes the prayer of consecration. God is good. All the time. All the time. First, sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. The Vicar General has delivered a very strong homily. I want three of you to come out to repeat what you think he said. Three of you. The first is uh, Reverend, not not a Reverend, as a glow. Come, 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 come. A portion, a portion. In the homely, the vicar general asked, give us five points. The first, we are called to service, and we are to serve in humility, with love, with compassion. And then we are called also to be filled with the Holy Spirit and be filled with wisdom. These are the points the Vicar General gave. Next is uh, Christian, Christian, Christian. Look, look, wait, wait, wait. Christian, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. In the homily, we have been told that the kind of work we are called for is pastoral work. We are supposed to take care of the spiritual needs of the people and also temporal work of mercy. And also, there are qualities that we are supposed to have. We have to be filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with wisdom for the work in the vineyard of God. And we are also supposed to work as a team. It's not an individual work, but a team work. These are some few points I can mention. The third one is uh, Paul George. Paul George. To add on to all what they said, the Vicar General also made mention of good reputation and also gave two examples of a good reputation. That is, a bad reputation is like an odor which can scatter people, and a good reputation is like a good odor which can bring people together. So as Deakin, we are not supposed to scatter, we are supposed to bind people together, just like Christ did. So you do what he tells you to do. You do it. You do it. Okay. Now, let's go. Commitment to celibacy. By your own free choice, you seek to enter the order of deacons. You shall exercise the ministry, the celibate state, for celibacy is both a sign and a motive of pastoral charity. And a special source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. 
by living in this state with total dedication, moved by the sincere love for Christ, the Lord, you are consecrated to him in a new and special way. By this consecration, you will adhere more easily to Christ with an undivided heart, which will you be more freely at the service of God and mankind, and uh, will be more untrammeled in the ministry of Christian conversion and uh, rebirth. By your life and character, you will give witness to your brothers and sisters in the faith that God must be loved above all else, and that it is he whom you serve in others. Therefore, I ask you, in the presence of God and the church, are you resolved as a sign of an inter interior dedication to Christ to remain celebrate for the sake of the kingdom and, and, uh, and uh, in lifelong service of God and mankind? I am. May the Lord help you to persevere in your commitments. Amen. Examination of candidates. My sons, before you are ordained deacons, you must declare before the people of God your intention to undertake this service. Are you willing to uh, ordain to the, for, the, for the church's ministry by the laying of our hands the gift of the Holy Spirit? Are you resolved to discharge the office of deacon with humility and love in order to assist the bishop, the priest, and to serve the people of Christ? I am. Are you resolved to hold fast to the ministry of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim his faith in love and action as it is taught by the gospel and the church's tradition. I am. I resolve to maintain and deepen a spirit of prayer appropriate to your own way of life and keeping with uh, what were uh, required of you to celebrate faithfully with uh, the liturgy of the hours for the church and for the whole world. I am. I resolve to shape your way of life always according to the example of Christ, whose body and blood you will, 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 you will give to the people. I am with the help of God. Your flaws. Do you, do you uh, promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun to do this good work in you, bring you to fulfillment. Gabriel, do you promise our respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Derek, do you promise to respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God who has begun this good work in you bring it to fulfillment.
Maxwell, do you promise to respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God who has begun this good thing to bring it to fulfillment. Raymond, do you promise to respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who have begun this good work in you, bring it to you. Raymond, do you promise to respect and respect to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. David, do you promise to respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Martin, you will promise obedience and respect to your ordinary. I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Joseph, you promise to respect and obedience to your ordinary. I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Christian. Christian, do you promise of respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God who has begun this good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Bernard, do you promise obedience and respect to your ordinary? I do. May God who has begun this good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Julius, do you promise to respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. James, do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Pastor George, do you promise obedience and respect to your ordinary? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, 
bring it to fulfillment. Clement, do you promise to respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. The God who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us rise. My dear people of God, let us pray that our powerful Father will pour out his blessing on this servant of his whom he receives the order of deacons. Let us kneel. We treat the litany of the saints.
and resurrection. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, to us sinners. Us Guide and protect your holy church. Us Keep the Pope and all the clergy in faithful to your church. and make them holy. Consecrate these men for their sacred duties. Jesus, Son of the living God, our petitions and give your help to this act of our ministry. We judge this man worthy to, to serve as deacons, and we ask you to bless them and make them holy. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us kindly stand. The Archbishop will now lay hands on the candidate.
the Archbishop will pray the prayer of consecration. The candidate should please kneel. Almighty God, be present with us by your power. You are the source of all honor. You, uh, you sign, I sign each to his rank, you give each his ministry. You will remain no change, but you watch over your creation, you make it new to your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the word, your power, and your wisdom. You foresee all things in your eternal providence and make and make due provision for every age. You make the church, Christ's body, grow to its full stature as a new, greater temple. You enrich it with every kind of grace and perfect it with a diversity of members to serve the whole body in a wonderful pattern of unity. You establish a twofold ministry of word and service to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, for the glory of your name. As ministers of your tabernacle, you chose the sons of Levi and gave them your blessing as with us their everlasting inheritance. As your first days of the church, in your first days of the church, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh, the apostles of your son appointed seven men of good repute uh, to assist them in their daily ministry so that, they were there, so that they themselves might be more free for prayer and uh, preaching. By prayer and the laying of hands, you chose apostles entrusted to these men, chosen men, the ministry of the seven at tables. Lord, look with favor on this servant of yours, whom you, choose, you now dedicate to the office, office of deacon, to minister at your holy temple. Look, Lord, look, send forth, send them forth the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of their sevenfold grace and carry out faithfully the work of the ministry. May they, may they be excel, may they excel in every virtue, in love that's sincere, in concern for the poor, sick and the poor, in assuming authority, in, in assuming authority, in their self-discipline and in the holiness of life. May, they, may their conduct exemplify your commandments and lead with, uh, your, your people to imitate their purity of life. May they remain strong and steadfast, giving the whole, the, uh, the, the whole world the witness of a true conscience. May they be, may they in their life many imitate your son who came not to be served, but to serve, and, to, and one day reign with him in heaven. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. With the laying on of hands and the prayer of consecration, our 15 brothers are now Reverend Deacons. May I invite the parish priest of our new deacons for the investiture.
a song please they will be vested with a decking stool which is worn across the chest and dramatic their official liturgical garments the king, the newly ordained, goes to the archbishop and kneels before him. The archbishop places the book of the gospel in the hands of the newly ordained, saying, Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe and practice what you teach. After that, the archbishop stands and gives them the kiss of peace. Reverend Theophilus, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Reverend Gabriel, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Derek. Reverend Derek. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Live what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
Reverend Maxwell, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Live what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Reverend Raymond, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Live what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Reverend Jonas, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Reverend David, Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Live what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Martin. Reverend Martin, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Live what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Reverend Joseph, when you say you are Joseph, you make, me, you make a mistake. You are Reverend Joseph. Reverend Joseph, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Christian. Christian. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Live what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. <laughs> Reverend Bernard, oh. receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Reverend Julius, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Live what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Reverend Joe, uh, James, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. 
Believe what you read. Teach what you believe. And practice what you teach. Reverend Paul George, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Thank Clement. Reverend Clement. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Live what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Amen. The Archbishop will now give them the kiss of peace. As the choir leaders in songs of praise. That's why I run it.
We shall sing from hymn number 63. Hymn 63. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice on yours may be accepted to God the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set them a, set as an example, accept we pray the oblation of your service and grant that. Offer ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just. 
I will do it in our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your uh, only begotten Son high priest of, of the new and eternal covenant. And by, by your wonderful design, we are pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has uh, made his own, but with brother's uh, kindness, he also, he also chooses men and they, uh, to become sharers in his sacred ministry to the laying of hands. You chose them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with, with, the, with the word and strengthen them with the sacrament. And uh, as they give up their life for, uh, for you and for salvation of your brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed but the, to the image of Christ himself, and so offer you a constant awareness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with our holy mages and archangels and saints, we too we, we would your, uh, give you thanks as we, in exhortation we acclaim. of all holiness. May you call therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time was betrayed. The time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, once upon a standard, he took the chalice, 
And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. He went to me no He went to me no Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking out the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John Bonaventure, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection no, who mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Throne him with him in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us rise at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the, help, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope 
In the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. I am with your spirit. Peace be with you. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. With the body and blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Arise, Kali faithful. So it's time for communion, and it's reserved for only practicing Catholics who have prepared themselves. If you are not a Catholic, please stay in your pew and pray. The ushers will direct us, and wherever we are, the priest will come close to us and give us the body of Christ. Our first communion hymn will be 103, 103, followed by 104. <laughs>
shall we rise? Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants whom you have replenished with the heavenly fortune, that for the sake of your glory, of, uh, of our believers, they may be faithful as ministers of the gospel of the sacraments of Christ. Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please sit. May I invite Mrs. Cecilia Senu and Father Cyril Calloway for some presentations. Mrs. Senu and Father Cyril Calloway. God is good and all the time. Your Grace, Most Reverend John Bonaventure Kofi, all other protocol observed. As a community, we are very grateful for what God has done in the life of our brothers. And as a way of honoring the grace that has found dimensions in their spirits today, we would like to offer them a token. So I'd like to invite them one after the other as they step forward to receive this token of honor that we bestow on them as a community. Reverend Derek Senor Abbey. Reverend Ramon Lord Ampon. <laughs> Reverend Julius Kofi De La Gamezi. Reverend Maxwell Kwame Azaglu. <laughs> Reverend Gabriel Edem Dachumo. Reverend Jonas Abaifa Don Prayer. <clears throat> Reverend David Ose Dumfo. Reverend Martin Bame Linam. <laughs> Reverend James J. Jata.
Reverend Pa George Mendy. Reverend Clement Quigrin. <laughs> Reverend Joseph Efasian. <laughs> Reverend Christian Yakut. Reverend Theophilus T. Interiando Jr. <laughs> Reverend Bernard J. Asamoa Quatin. <laughs> and I'd like us to give a round of applause to our vice chairperson, Mrs. Cecilia Seno for doing us the honors. We pray that whatever token is inside the parcel that you have taken would help in your work with God. God bless us all. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, St. Dominic Parish, for your wonderful gifts. Christian mothers have also done some presentation. It was brought in the offertory, so we thank you very much for your beautiful gifts. We want to acknowledge in a special way Nana Edubediakon Taifa Manche. Nene. Yeah, that's Thank you very much for gracing the occasion. Uh, Nana Dubediaku came with one of his elders, I'm sure. So, Onupa Ofane Ojefe. Aha, okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Say, Ubija Nana. Yeah, that's it. Yo, I mean, Shirao. So I'll invite one of the new Dickens for their words of our appreciation. Your Grace, Most Reverend John Bonaventure Kofi, CSSP, Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, Very Reverend Father John Kwabba Louis, Vicar General of the Archdiocese, Nana Edu Bediakon, Priest and Religious Guarded, Dear People of God, and All Protocols Observed, Good Morning. Good afternoon, sorry. <laughs> Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love endures forever. Odu ladunai kito, kile olam ashdo. Given these words of the chronicler, 
we cannot but to be grateful to God for this good and indescribable gift of ordination. For the beautiful journey so far, despite its ups and downs, and for making this celebration a success. Sacred ordination is neither a merit nor a right. And so, we bow in appreciation to our beloved father, Most Reverend John Bonaventure Kofi, CSSP, and his team of consultants for their unflinching support and for judging us worthy of this sacred gift of God. Your grace, we are most grateful. We pray for God's strength, healing, wisdom for you, and we ask that God grants you speedy recovery. Permit us to convey our heartfelt gratitude to all our seminary formators for guiding and forming us after the heart of Christ, the Good Shepherd. Special thanks also goes to the rector, formators, and non-teaching staff of St. Paul's Catholic Seminary for accommodating us these few days in preparation for this day. We would also want to thank Very Reverend Father John Kwabna Louis for the thought-provoking and heart-piercing homely. It is our prayer that the words you have shared with us will lead us on through our ministry. We are equally grateful to our vocations directors, both past and present, for their commitment, dedication, and guidance, and to the pastoral team, whose species of advice and critique during our pastoral year impacted our formation. May God bless you all. We cannot forget to thank Reverend Father Joseph Atta, Reverend Father Cyril McCaffrey Callaway, and the parishioners of St. Dominic Catholic Church for hosting our ordination to the diaconate. We are grateful to all priests, especially very Reverend Father Wisdom Lawe, Reverend Father Michael Melvin Kofi Mensa, who prepared us for our pastoral year. I equal to all parish priests, to our parish priests, all religious and seminarians, and to our parents, family, and friends, benefactors and benefactresses, and all whom who in diverse ways have played a role in what we have become today. May God reward you all. There is no doubt that this celebration has been successful. Kind courtesy, the planning committee, whose efforts have culminated in this beautiful event. We appreciate you all. We also thank all the ministries, the mass service, the choir, the ashes, the media, and all who worked behind the scene to animate the celebration. May God bless you. To you, our dear people of God, accept our profoundest appreciation for your prayerful support, words of encouragement, thoughtful gifts, and above all, your love. Arise, Catholic faithful. Arise, Catholic faithful. Arise, Catholic faithful. Saint Dominic. Saint Dominic. Saint Dominic. My brothers and I ask that you continue to pray for us, that we may become faithful servants of God and not successful servants. Once again, we say thank you. Merci beaucoup. Akwenami. Yedamwase. Mungode. Barka.
Rejoice and renew. Some announcements. Sunday, the 22nd January, is Sunday of the Word of God. We are all encouraged to celebrate in our various churches. On Saturday, at 8, at St. Bakita Church, there will be orientation of parish pastoral counselors in Tema, Bato Ada, and Ashaman Dinries. The time is 8 a.m. No lateness. After recession, deacons with their parents will join the archbishop at the rectory for refreshment. Priests, religious, and other family members with coupons will also pick their food from under the tree close to the notice board. The ushers will direct us. We shall take some photographs after the blessing. Please remember to pick anything you brought into the church. Bottle, tissue, handbag, phones. Please do not forget to leave anything behind. To add my voice to what our brothers have already said, we want to thank you and God bless you for coming. Choristers, everybody else, God bless you. We shall all stand and receive a blessing. Extraordinary ministers of the Eucharist, the second session of your training is on at the Holy Spirit Cathedral. Please be on time. Good, good. All the time. We have all performed wonderfully well. Talk for yourselves. And especially the choir. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May God who has called you to the church, give you great, great zeal for all eternity. Amen. Amen. May he trust you, pray in the God of Christ, help you as we live this work with sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. Amen. May he who has appointed you, see us of, of his mysteries. Make you imitators of his son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. So we shall take some photographs. The Archbishop will be seated in front. Photographs with the new deacons. We invite the Vicar General to join. Invite the Chancellor to join.
Please join the Archbishop for the photograph. And um, very Reverend Father Okai, Rector St. Paul Seminary. PTC Executives of St. Dominic and Planning Committee, Camp Plaza. Planning Committee for this ordination, PPC Executives, St. Dominic Parish. Please come closer. Thank you very much, Planning Committee and PPC. Please be fast for us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Research that him. Three eight nine. Research on him. Only the dickens with the archbishop. Only the dickens with the archbishop. The rest can be taken outside. 